Let me now open the floor for the interactive dialogue on the annual report of the High Commissioner. I give the floor to the representative of the United Nations Watch. Thank you, Mr. President. Madam High Commissioner, we thank you for your annual reports and indeed for all your service. We wish to focus on Section 6 of your report on the Durban Review Conference. UN Watch, as you know, has been a pillar of the anti-racism movement. Our founder, the late Ambassador Morris Abram, was a pioneer of the civil rights movement in the American South, marching arm in arm with Martin Luther King and winning one of the great legal battles for African Americans. It is in this spirit that we share our concerns. Your report describes the outcome of the 2001 Durban Conference as a, quote, far-reaching and historic document and looks forward to the 2009 follow-up. We wish to ask, why does your report omit mention of the notorious abuses that marred the 2001 conference, abuses of equality and of human rights, and which threatened to mar the follow-up event as well? There is no mention of the 2001 meeting in Tehran, which singled out only one country, Israel, for ethnic cleansing, and I quote, ethnic cleansing, apartheid, and crimes against humanity, end quote. Nor that the final Durban Declaration, while toning down this language, nevertheless went on to discriminate against the Jewish state. Nor is there mention of Durban's NGO part, where anti-Semitism in verbal and physical attacks was rampant. Caricatures of Jews reminiscent of the Nazi period circulated freely. The final NGO statement declared Israel a racist apartheid state guilty of genocide. We recall the eyewitness account of Congressman and human rights champion Tom Lantos, whose recent loss all human rights defenders mourn. Quote, having experienced the horrors of the Holocaust firsthand, this was the most sickening and unabashed display of hate for Jews I had seen since the Nazi period, end quote. These and other concerns <coughs> led more than 40 states, including the European Union, to vote against the budget for Durban II. As President Sarkozy recently announced, and I quote, France will not allow a repetition of the excesses and abuses of 2001. Our European partners share France's concerns. He went on to say, and I quote, France will chair the EU in the final months preceding the review conference. And he said, I quote, I say to you, if ever our legitimate demands are not taken into account, we will disengage from the process, end quote. Similar warnings have been sounded by others with Canada already deciding not to participate. The genocidal anti-Semitism espoused in Durban and by Hamas in its sermons and media broadcasts was translated into deed last night in the massacre by a Palestinian terrorist of innocent students at the Merkaz Harav Yeshiva, a religious college murdered as they studied holy books, which you rightly condemned. We cannot help but notice that this crime occurred moments after this council gave a moral victory to Hamas by adopting yet another one-sided resolution, denying Israel's right to self-defense against exactly such crimes, whether in the form of rockets, suicide bombings, or shootings. Madam High Commissioner, we look to your vigilance in defending the true principles of human rights from those that would abuse them. We thank you again for your service and wish you every success. Thank you for your statement. A question was put to me as to uh, the Durban uh, review process and how to best uh, uh, ensure a successful outcome. Uh, Mr. President, I wish to stress again, as I've done on, on many, many previous occasions, I urge member states uh, to uh, take the initiatives that the General Assembly requires of them to ensure that this process unfolds. This is a member state-owned process. The General Assembly, I uh, I uh, need to remind you, uh, contemplates that there will be regional consultations between January of this year and August, and I still uh, sense, or we have not been contacted uh, except by one region to support this initiative. I think the success of the process will be largely dependent on the evolving consensus amongst member states as to what its contents should be, what the general direction should be. Um, and uh, we need, very much need, the guidance that will come in part from these regional consultations and, of course, in part from the next uh, preparatory meeting that will take place in April. And we are, of course, uh, ready to assist in these uh, two processes uh, so as to move uh, forward.